Hi, everyone. I'm Cheryl Pammer, a senior advisory statistician here at Minitab. Thank you for joining us here today. In this video, I am going to walk you through an example using Minitab statistical software and Minitab Connect focused on enhancing supply chain resilience. If you're watching this video as it premieres, feel free to ask questions in the chat. If not, please go to the description for more information and be sure to subscribe to our channel to not miss out on future interactive videos. In this video, we'll focus on improving customer cycle time, which is the time it takes from when the customer places the order on our website until the order is delivered to the customer's doorstep. We'll also dive into two main things impacting customer cycle time, the time it takes for the order to arrive from the main distribution center to our local warehouse in the geographical center of the city, and the time it takes to move from the local warehouse to the customer's address. So let me share my screen and show you how we're going to look at this supply chain data. So right now I'm in Minitab Connect. Connect allows us to add tables, automatically update them from various sources. So what we can do is we can bring in data from a file if we want, or use the REST API to automatically bring something in from other data sources, or we can use a connector that is already set up. So there are many connectors here already set up. We can use any of these or create our own, but this allows the automated flow of data. Now, in addition, I'm going to show uh, three tables that I have already set up related to this problem. We have a customer cycle time table, which talks about the, or gives us data around the time it takes from the minute the customer orders until they receive their product. I have information on on-time delivery, which is the delivery from our local warehouse to the customer, and then on-time shipping, which is the time it takes to ship the data, or ship the product from the main warehouse, which is quite a few miles away, into our local warehouse. So let's go ahead and look at the cycle time data. Now we can use the base tool to do things like change the data type and bring in the data. There's a flow tool that lets us automate specific data flows, including getting notifications when something goes wrong, getting uh, process rules in place, executing Minitab analyses, or even using results from a Minitab model. This allows us to automate all of the data work that we need to do so that we can constantly get updated most recent data in real time. Now I'm in the data prep tool. In the prep tool, I can do things like summarize my data in different ways and create different views of my data. I've already done this work. What I wanna do now is take this data around customer cycle time and investigate it in Minitab. In Minitab statistical software, I just need to open from Minitab Connect and I'm going to go to the subscription I have for Minitab Connect. And from there, I am going to open the data that is on customer cycle time so I can investigate it further. So now this data will come into Minitab as just a view. It's not data that I can change. It's just viewing what we see in Connect. If I want to go quickly back to the original source of data, I can do that just by clicking the open source link and that takes me back to that data set in Minitab Connect. Now back in Minitab statistical software, when I have data like this, what I want to do is just get an idea of which variables really matter. And in this case, I don't have that many, but I could have hundreds of variables. One of the ways to sort through all of that is using Minitab's predictive analytics automatic automated machine learning from the Minitab predictive analytics module. So if I discover best module, my response is customer cycle time, which is continuous. I have a few continuous predictors, some categorical predictors. I'll add those, click go, and Minitab will run through many, many different models to find the best one in order to predict what the cycle time will be. And in this case, it turns out that linear regression ended up being the best model to use. We'll move down to see what was important in this model. 
It turns out that here are our important predictors. Of all those we looked at, it turned out the things that mattered were the number of orders the customer placed kind of during that time period, the region of the city that they were in, north, south, west, or east, the number of orders squared, meaning how many orders they uh, placed in that time period, but we have a curved effect. And then the interaction between the number of things they actually ordered and the distance they live from the city center. Now, all of this is really interesting, but let's look at a factorial plot, which I can easily get from the taskbar of each of these important effects to understand better what's going on. So I mentioned number of orders is kind of a curve. We saw that in our model, but basically we see that as a customer ordered more things or placed additional orders during that time period, their cycle time went up. That we can explain because most likely what happened was we held the order back for delivery once we knew another order was going to be coming through. So that made the overall cycle time take longer. We see that the East region has a slightly higher number of cycle or cycle time, number of days until orders reached the East region in our city took a little bit longer. And then we see the interaction between the number of items in an order and the distance from the city center or distance really from our centralized warehouse. A significant interaction means the effect of one predictor depends on the setting of the other. And here we see, if we look at the blue line, if you lived close to the centralized warehouse, it didn't really matter too much how many items you had ordered. Um, the, it didn't have a big effect on the time it took to get the order. However, the further away you lived, represented by the red line, that indicated that, well, if you ordered more items, then it was more and more likely that it was gonna take longer to receive your order. This probably is because we don't mind delivering individual items when somebody lives close by, there's not as much of a cost. When somebody lived far away, again, represented by the red line, there was a much bigger impact to cost if we didn't hold the order back until all the items were ready for shipment. So the more items we had, the longer it took to receive the product. All right, now that we've explored this data in Minitab and we know what variables are actually the important ones to look at, let's go back to Connect. And in Connect, we're going to create our first dashboard that will give us real-time insights into what's going on with our supply chain data here. So I'm just simply going to add a dashboard. I need to tell Minitab Connect what data set I wanna focus on. And we know that that data set happens to be the customer cycle time data set. So we'll grab that data set. And now I can look at the things I can add. I'm going to start by adding some slicers, meaning I can add filters to my data. One, I should almost always add a date filter, meaning I only wanna look at data from a certain time period. So I'll put a date range slicer in. And then in this case, because I know the region of the city seemed to make a difference, I'm going to add a category slicer and let that slicer be region. Notice all I have to do is add the slicer, tell it what variable I want to slice on, in this case region, and there it is. And then I have a main KPI here that I want to highlight, and that is the actual cycle time. So I'll add a KPI to my dashboard over here. Just go in, we'll edit it to tell it I want to look at customer cycle time and what I want to look at. I can look at the mean, median, sum, et cetera. I'm going to look at the average customer cycle time because that's the KPI we want to keep a handle on. And we also want that to improve over time. We want to reduce the time it takes for the customer to receive our product. Now, we knew there were some other variables that were important. I want to highlight them in a graph, and one of the best ways to do that is to use the graph builder in Minitab Connect. The graph builder automatically knows, once I start adding variables, what sort of graphs make sense for that type of variable. So I'm gonna put in customer cycle or time, but I also know there were other things that were important, like the distance we are from the centralized warehouse in the city, so the distance from the city center, 
Um, we know that the number of orders they placed mattered. We know that region of the city mattered. As I add variables, I get more and more feedback as to the visualizations that um, might matter to us. In this case, add region, I can look through some of these and see which ones seem to um, be the most interesting to me. Now, I happen to know with the variables I have, the things that probably are going to work the best are things related to maybe scatter plots, or I'm going to look at bubble plot. Oh, wow, that one looks interesting. So let's go ahead and create the bubble plot in our dashboard. So what this bubble plot is telling me is we can see that as we get further and further away from the city center, we see our cycle time goes slightly increasing. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Um, we also see we can look at the difference between the various regions. And we see that the bubbles are smaller when we had smaller numbers of orders. So all those things will be useful in my dashboard. I can name my dashboard. We'll call it the delivery dashboard. And then once I save it, it's ready to send out to the world. But before we do that, there's some additional things I was interested in. So I'm going to add under data sources, the on-time delivery data source. We'll open that one. And I will also add under data sources on time shipping because these were also data sources I was interested in. And I can add things to the dashboard related to them as well. So I haven't investigated these data sources yet. So for example, I want to look at on time delivery. Once uh, we have the item in our centralized warehouse, we want to be able to deliver it within 45 minutes. Let's investigate this particular data set back in Minitab before we do anything with the dashboard. So I'll go back and open this data set from Minitab Connect. And this one was the on-time delivery data set. And in this case, I had some specific specifications I wanted to meet. So I'm going to start by just looking at how the um, travel time or delivery time um, relates to our 45 minute specification limit. So I'm going to use a capability analysis. And to keep things simple, I'm going to automate that. So my automated capability analysis. I have no subgroups, so we use subgroup size of one. And my upper specification is I want things delivered within 45 minutes for um, my specific packages. All right, automatic capability analysis goes through several distributions and transformations to find one that fits the data because that's a very important assumption of capability. And as in this case, it didn't actually find a distribution or transformation that fit this data. It's kind of messy data. So instead, it's using a distribution or non-parametric, uh, distribution-free or non-parametric approach. But we can look at the capability, CNPK for non-parametric capability. It's quite low, quite a ways below one. We see that we have 58,873 to parts per million defective or almost 6% defect rate. So it's not a particularly capable process. This is something we want to keep our eye on, though, and we might want it in our dashboard. So I can do that by sending this particular set of output to Minitab Connect. This is the uh, travel time capability. So I, I click Send. And then over in Connect, in my same dashboard, now I can add that mini tab output for as an analysis. So if I choose analysis in the dashboard, I open this and there's my travel time data. There it is. Open my analysis and now I've added this particular analysis to my dashboard and I can size it the way I want. Now I'll also have that capability and I can keep my eye on the capability analysis as things change over time because again i'm going to be automatically bringing in the most recent data now to save time i've actually filled out this dashboard a little bit more um, this is the customer cycle time dashboard i'll show you uh, using all the same things using graph builder using 
uh, analyses from Minitab and filters, et cetera, I have a more complete dashboard here. You saw the bubble chart, but if I wanted to just focus on a certain region, notice if I want to focus on the east region, for example, I see my cycle time for that region goes up to 8.66 days, whereas for the north region, it's only 7.5 days. And as I do this, I see my bubble chart show up for just that region. We'll go back to all. Now, we were also interested in what was going on with the time it takes for the order to get from the main distribution center, which is many miles away in another city, to our centralized warehouse. So gathering all the items in these orders, we're really interested in how that works. Turns out we had a couple different carriers for that. We have Swift Logic and New Horizons care, and we're going to keep an eye on them. Um, our overall late deliveries are at 32%, which is not great. About a third of the time, we're not getting the product into our centralized warehouse within the time we want to. So 32.3% late deliveries. I might want to actually look at it, though, by carrier because it seems like a difference. If you look at Horizon, proportionally, there's less proportion of blue than there seems to be with Swift Logic. So again, using my splitter, my filter, I can look at horizon and see the defect rate is 21%, whereas with Swift Logic, the defect rate is 73%. And if we break that down by whether the items were sent by rail or truck, almost all of those sent by almost all of those sent by truck were arriving late for Swift Logic. So that's some actionable insight we get from our dashboard. And we're, we're going to want to keep looking at that and get the latest data and keep an eye on what's going on there. Now, we also have the capability analysis we looked at before. And then in addition, I added a scatter plot here at the top that's looking at, does it matter when we deliver the product from our centralized warehouse in the center of the city out to the customer, does the departure time matter? These departure times are in military time. And we see over the course of the day, they seem to kind of increase the um, travel time increases as we get closer and closer to say five o'clock. But we can separate that out. I'm gonna do this slightly differently. If I use highway five, it looks like the travel time stays about the same. However, if instead I use the freeway, that's where I see the increasing travel time. We can take out Highway 5. So I can do some nice interactivity here to actually see what's going on with my data. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now because we've seen the successful use of a dashboard. As we've seen, Minitab Connect empowers businesses to go beyond reactive measures and proactively manage their supply chain. So by continuously monitoring these key metrics like on-time delivery, you can identify and address potential issues before they impact your customer satisfaction and erode your bottom line. A proactive approach not only strengthens your supply chain, but also enhances your overall business performance through process improvements. Thank you for joining us today. As I mentioned earlier, take a look at our description below to learn more and start your journey towards a more resilient and efficient supply chain with Minitab.